So come on then, let's have a look. Right. What do you reckon? Oh, very nice. It's for tonight, me and Rachel going into town. Do you fancy it? Eh, no. I've got the feeling we'll be in the mood. Hi. Oh yeah. No work today. I took a half day and went into town to do some shopping. Do you like this? Oh, it's pretty. Lovely colour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Five minutes? Yeah, Em, I'll just finish my coffee. So, have you said anything about the Amnio? No, I just went to choose me moment. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck. Thanks. I think I'm gonna need it. Have we got any turmeric? Turmeric? Yeah, it's a spice you put in curries. I thought you put curry powder in curries. No, not in proper curries. I'm making us a Kashmiri. A what? A chicken Kashmiri. It's not gonna be too hot, is it? No, I'll make it nice and mild, put loads of fruit in it. You'll like it. Right, that's me list done. What's with all this galloping girl, mate? Well, I've got nothing better to do with me time, and it's better than moping around all day, isn't it? Well, you can come the Aussie with me. Come on. Well, Ben still hasn't heard the news about Ron Dixon yet. I want to tell him today. Yeah, I know you do, but do you really need me to be there? Well, yeah, for a bit of model support. Well, you don't want to be crowding the lad out, do you? What do you mean? Well, I mean, he's still not well, is he? You've got to give him a bit of breathing space. You don't want all hands going down there. Do you reckon? Yeah. Be gentle with him. Take it easy. Oh, I suppose so. Mm. Tell you what, you go down there on your own today. Tell him about Ron, and I'll come with you tomorrow, OK? Yeah. And by the time you get back here tonight, I'll have made us the best ruby money you've ever tasted. Oh. <laughs> right, thanks very much, Mary. I'll make sure it goes off. Oh. See ya. Good night, love. Hey, Dad. Good day away. Oh, I'd better. Oh, he's rings around you. Hey, it's not the kids that are messing me around. You are? Oh, it's me at the department, isn't it? I don't know what he's playing at. He pulls me in last week, right, pats me on the back, tells me about this job that's going, gives me the nod, the wink, all that palaver. So I think the job's as good as mine, don't I? Is this the job we've all been toasting to? Yeah. Only the trouble is... I think I've been counting my chickens. Oh, Dad. Well, how was I to know who's going to put a big flaming advert in the paper here? Look at that. Look. Oh, so all kinds will be going for it now? Exactly. Gonna have to do a what's it, aren't I? Application, CV, everything. I don't stand a chance. Never mind, eh? Never mind. You're choking, aren't you, love? Your mother's convinced I've got this job. She's counting on it. She's talking about ordering a three piece suite and everything. Uh oh. Yeah, exactly. Just wait until I tell her the good news, eh? Ben's lying half crippled in that hospital bed, and it's because of me. <sighs> That's the way you feel about it. I do now. <sighs> I suppose you've done the right thing, telling the truth. But I feel better for it, even if I am facing six months inside. And what about Sinbad? What's going to happen to him? Don't talk to me about him. You know that Carmel one? She won't have a word said against him. But it was him who gave me the O's and the Cougar, wasn't it? Yeah. And all right, I've held my hand up. I shouldn't have fitted the Cougar. But if it wasn't for him, none of this would have happened. It doesn't seem fair, does it? Them coming down on you like a ton of bricks. Well, he's walking around like butter wouldn't melt. Sickens me to be back teeth. Maybe I'll see you later, son. Don't want to be late for work. Yeah, see you later, Dad. Take it easy. It's exciting, isn't it? Going to see the baby again. Yeah. Let's just hope everything's all right, eh? Well, of course everything's going to be OK. Yeah, but it's a 20-week scan, isn't it? It's dead important. <laughs> Jackie, I know you're nervous, but the baby will be just fine. I know it. How? Oh. <laughs> Call it intuition, if you like. What? Oh, I don't know. 
I've just realized how lucky I am. What do you mean? Well, I've been thinking a lot about what happened after the night of the explosion. Oh, when I thought I was going to lose Max and you had the scare with the baby, it put everything into perspective. You know, about the pregnancy, about the baby. You can't be blessings, don't you? Yeah, I suppose so. The baby will be just fine. I know it. But what do you reckon? Girl or boy? <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Me neither. Come on. To the university. See Marcus's speech. Did your father say you could go? Yes, he has. I can speak for myself, thank you. Dad says it's fine. No, oh, does he? He's going to pick us up afterwards, actually. I don't suppose you fancy coming along with us? I don't think so. I'll go on, bring Dad along as well. He'd love to hear how the biotech companies are restructuring the food chain. I'm sure he would. Thanks for the invitation, but I'm rather busy. Too busy to save the planet? Oh, who's from? Bioengineers or criminals like I do every day. Have fun. See ya. Bye. I Papa told you didn't work. So did I. You okay? They've sacked me, haven't they? Well, how come? Because of all the time I've taken off since the explosion. They can't do that. You haven't been well. I mean, that explosion nearly killed you. You don't think they're going to let a minor little detail like that bother them, do you? <sighs> Sots. Bloody shower. Treating the staff like that. No sense of loyalty. They won't last five minutes and I told them so. I don't suppose there's any chance of them giving you a reference, then, eh? Bloody great, innit, eh? Hey? My life in tatters all because of that bloody gas cooker. Hey, peg leg. Hope you're pleased with yourself. You are? I've just lost my job because of you. How come? If you hadn't been selling bent gas cookers, none of this would have happened. I'll give us a break, will you? Oh, bloody hey, tempt me. Take it easy, will you? Ah, sod it. Sod the lot of you. Where are you going? I'm going to buy myself another kooka. Only this time I'll stick my head in it. You OK? Yeah. Are you? No, oh, exactly. <laughs> me too. <laughs> OK. Is everything all right? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's in the right place. Do you want to know the sex? Oh. It's a boy. Oh, it's a boy. Well, how can you tell? Well, see this bit between his legs? <laughs> <laughs> What? Look at him. You can see his little feet and everything. <laughs> penny for them. What? A penny for your thoughts. Oh, sorry, look. There's miles away there. You were right? Yeah. I was just thinking. Made a wife fool of myself, haven't I? Hey? Well, going round, telling you all I've got this job. Oh, right. Well, you might still get it yet, Dad. Up against that sort of competition, you joking, love? Well, you never know. There'll be all sorts going for it. Oh, don't give up yet, eh? You know what, love? How it all worked out? New three-piece for your mother. A couple of suits for me. A few bob for you and the kids. Even thought we might be able to afford a holiday together. A holiday? Yeah, I know. Be the first proper one we've ever had. Oh, Dad. Listen, love, will you do us a favour? Hold the fort while I nip home and see your mum. Yeah, no problem, it's Dad. <laughs> Which is what I'll be if your mother's ordered that new couch. See you later. He kicked, did you see? <laughs> yeah, and I felt him as well. <sighs> He'll be playing for Liverpool before you know it. <laughs> uh, no way, it's gonna be a true blue this one. <laughs> Just like his dad's. <laughs> okay. Is it alright if we watch for a bit longer? Beats watching EastEnders, doesn't oh, it? Even Emmerdale. <laughs> <laughs> I've um I've got a few others to do. It kicked again! <sighs> it's gonna break me ribs at this race. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. oh thanks. Perfect, isn't he? Yeah, he's perfect. <laughs> hey, you're gonna have to put on a t-shirt like Jimmy Corkill did for Jackie. <laughs> Still no joy from that painter. Why is it that the building trade is so elusive? Another of life's great mysteries. What time are you gonna pick up Louise and Dan? Oh, about an hour or so. Don't you think Danny's a bit young for this? What for? Going to the talk. Well, he's going with Louise. Yeah, but that's not the point. I mean, it's not just anybody speaking, is it? Eleanor, this is a debate at the university. I think it's great that Danny's going. It's, it's just the sort of thing he should be getting a taste for. Aren't you being a bit naive? Sorry? Marcus is an extremist. Danny's just a kid. Well, I don't think he's going to be coming home clutching a Kalashnikov just yet. This isn't funny. No, I know it isn't funny. Look, if you're that worried about what Marcus is going to say, then, well, why don't you and I go to see him as well? What? Well, it can't do any harm. Anyway, I'd quite like to see him in action. See what all the fuss is about. All right. Wait a minute. Nice. What can I get you? Fish and chips, please. What are you doing here? Now, is that any way for a man to be greeted by his wife? Curry. I can't remember what it's called, but it's got all kinds of fancy fruit in it. Hey, if it's nice, I'll put some in a tubeware box for you and bring it in. Would you like that? Yeah, great. With any luck, it'll give me the runs. Oh, love. Listen, old Tim said he'd come and see it as well. After work, you can bring Mel with him. Is there anything you want bringing in? You know what's happening on Saturday? The half marathon. I was meant to be running in it. That's a laugh, isn't it? Oh, love. Never mind. Look on the bright side, eh? At least I won't have to buy any new trainees. Love. Look, I know it's hard and I know you're angry. Stuck here, can't move. If I could get out of bed. You've just got to take it easy, Ben. But you don't know what it's like. My mind's racing, working overtime. But my body just won't work. I know, love, I know. Look, I don't know whether this is the right time to tell you. But you're going to find out sooner or later. Find out what? Well, they think they know what caused the explosion. So, what do you want? I told you. Fish and chips. Oh, same old Gary, eh? The joke for every occasion. What are you doing here? Just thought I'd say hello. And? Oh, you have got a suspicious mind, haven't you? Wonder where I got that from, eh? So, where have you been these past two years? Well, do you care where I've been? I care, cos... cos I want a divorce. Oh, well, that figures. What? Peter, isn't it? And how do you know? Read all about it in the paper. You, him and Kylie. Nice little happy family. Regular 2.4 children touch. Summer wedding, is it? Got it all planned, eh? Except you've forgotten one tiny little detail. You're still married to me. There's no choice of mine, Gary. If I didn't know where you've been these past two years, we'd be divorced by now. I want nothing to do with you. Well, that's by the by. Cos you and I are still man and wife. And you and Loverboy can't go down the aisle until we're divorced. And we're not getting divorced until I say so. You are? Who do you think you are? I'm your husband, Linz. In name only. I want a divorce, Gary. Not unless I say so. See, I've been doing my own work. And if I decide to dig my heels in... But why? Then why do you think? Money. What else is there? Are you blackmailing me? Yeah. If you want a divorce, you're going to have to pay for it. Ten thousand pounds. What? I haven't got ten thousand pounds. And if I did, what makes you think I'd give it to you? Well, if you want to get married... I'm not that desperate. I'm not desperate enough to pay a toe rag like you. We'll sit it out. Suit yourself? 
You've got a nerve after what you've done to me. Planting those drugs on me. Let's not go over that again. Planting drugs on Kylie. Your own daughter. Look, I regret doing that. I'll pull the other one, Gary. Seriously. It was wrong doing that to Kylie. I think about it a lot. I think about her. But she's changed, hasn't she? Grown up. I miss her. What? I want to see her, Linz. No way. You stay away from her, I'm warning you. You can't stop a man from seeing his daughter. I bloody well can. You stay away. I've got rights. I'm entitled. I'm her father. I see. That's what it is. You'd use air to get at me. Well, wouldn't be the first divorce to argue the toss over the kids, would it? You've got no chance. Say, a couple of hours every Sunday afternoon? No. Yes. Gaddy, she doesn't even know you. And that's the way I want it to stay. Really? I bet she'll remember me. Don't do this. Please. Anything. Anything? Don't even think about touching me. There's no need for this. How about the ten grand, eh? You get your divorce, I'll disappear, and you and Kylie and your new fella can get on with playing happy families. Oh, and forget about the fish and chips. I'm not hungry after all. Ron Dixon! Yeah. Well, it was Ron who fitted the cooker, and you think that's what caused the explosion? What was he thinking of? You're supposed to be registered to do that sort of thing. I know. And all to save a few quid, I bet you. I'm sorry, love. I just thought you'd want to know. So where did he get it? Sorry? The cooker, where did he get it? Probably off some backstreet cowboy. Um, well, he got it off Simbat, actually. Simbat? Well, Simbat told him not to fit the cooker. He told him to get someone in. What? Well, he gave him a hose with it, but he told Ron not to fit it himself. So it's all down to your fella. But it was Ron who fitted the cooker. Yeah, but Simba give him the hose to fit it. He knows he's not allowed to do that. It's against the law. Well, he must have known. Oh, of course he knew. That law's there to protect people. It's no different to selling fireworks to little kids and telling them not to use them. But Ron Dixon's not a little kid. It doesn't matter. It's the same deal. You don't do it. You just don't do it. What, what are we doing here? I mean, are you sure about this? Yeah, it'd be a laugh. I don't think we're going to see Ken Dodd. Oh, come on. We'll just catch the last five minutes. It won't do us any harm. I don't want to even be in the same room as him. Well, we'll just stand at the back out of the way. Look, it'll give us a chance to see where he's coming from. And the next time Louise accuses you of being out of touch, well... <laughs> OK. Come on, but stay by my side. I just can't wait to tell Max. <laughs> he'll be made up, won't he? Oh, he'll be delighted. He didn't say anything, and he's secretly been hoping for a boy. Me? I don't mind either way, just as long as the baby's healthy. Yeah, Emma, um, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. About what? Well, about the baby being healthy. Well, you know, with it being the 20-week scan. Oh, I know you were worried. You were so quiet before we went in, but I told you everything would be OK, didn't I? Yeah, I know that, but... And he's beautiful, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah, he's great. He's perfect, little... <laughs> Hands, little leg. Oh, I just got to have a look at the scan before we go. Oh, beautiful. I just can't wait to tell Max. I know about direct action. I've been there. I've done it. Yeah, I was violent. And I paid the price. 18 years at Her Majesty's pleasure. So believe me when I say to you, I've had plenty of time to think about whether violence works. <laughs> Direct action, yes, but violence, no. We need to change, move with the times. There's other ways of making ourselves heard. It's genetically engineered tomato puree we should be spilling in the streets, not blood. It's not about laboratories and research establishments anymore. It's about the high street, the supermarkets. And that's where we should be taking the fight, the non-violent revolution. It's about what's in people's shopping trolleys, about what they eat. Clone tomatoes and cucumbers. Every cucumber and tomato the same size. 
It's making packaging and pricing easier. And now they've moved on to animals. Why? Because the supermarkets want their lamb chops to be the same shape and size as well. Great! Ten million, Dolly the sheep. Well, I've heard of split personality, but I think that's taking it a little too far. <laughs> All right, love. Been busy? No, not really. Oh, well. Squared it with your mother anyway. She was sound about it. I suppose she's used to me letting her down, isn't she? Maybe we'll have that holiday next year, eh? All go away together. Me, your mother, young Peter and the kids, eh? What'd you say? You all right? Yeah. yeah. Well, as if you've seen a ghost. <laughs> no, this isn't science fiction. This is science fact. It's not an episode of the X-Files. It's the real world. The world we are about to surrender to the biotechnologists. Their combined power to dominate world markets, it's awesome. And the train has already left the station. But it's up to us to stop it. Not by derailing it, but by setting the signals to red. Red to stop. Red for danger. It's time to fight back, because this planet is ours. It belongs to us, the people, not the conglomerates and multinationals. It's our planet, so let's take it back. your eyes on this little lot. We have got poppadoms, Ooh, followed by shish kebab, followed by What's up, love? Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? About the hose you gave to Ron. I did tell you. Well, you didn't tell me it was illegal that he wasn't allowed to have it. Look, I tried to tell you the whole story. You knew Ron would try and fit that cuckoo, didn't you? No. Of course you did. Why else would he have wanted the hose? You knew what you were doing. I'm sorry. It's just as bad as Ron Dick's words. What? What you've done to our Ben. Look. I... Why do you think they have laws like that, eh? To stop idiots like you doing what you did. You've broken the law by allowing Ron Dixon to try and fit a cuckoo when he didn't know what he was doing. Oh, God help me. I never meant for anything like this to happen. Please, you've got to believe me. It was just an accident. But it wouldn't have happened if you had done what you were supposed to. Well, it, I mean, it was Ron. I mean, he's like a mate, love. I didn't mean anything. What about my son? Come on. What about Ben? Oh. Next on 4, it's a Friday comedy outburst as Sybil returns with a bang.
you going to be long? Ages. I've got all this to wade through yet. Afraid I'm not the fastest typist in the world. What is it you're working on? Some notes for the talk Marcus is giving in Manchester. You don't mind, do you? Only need it this afternoon. No, no, you carry on. These book reviews aren't urgent. So, persuasive stuff, is it? I mean, judging by the response he got to his talk the other evening. That's one for you. Wasn't he brilliant? All that talk on genetic farming and headless frogs. Yep, he uh, certainly appears to know his stuff. And he's right, you know. We've got to let people know what's going on before it's too late for us all. Yeah, well, so long as it's done peacefully. Yeah, sure. As you said, it's the only way that people will take us seriously. Wow! It's a flight ticket for Marcus. Where to? To Belfast. He wants me to go with him when he lectures there next week. Oh. And he's been invited to talk in the States as well, at Berkeley. And he wants me to go along as his PA. <laughs> yeah, well, I think you ought to talk to Eleanor about that. <sighs> They'll absolutely love him over there when they hear him. I bet the Yanks have never seen anyone with so much power and control over an audience before. Just leave it, will you? Said I'd do it. Sorry. I don't want you anywhere near my Ben's things. Well, I'm just trying to help. Like you'd help Ron Dixon blow up half the parade. Come on, please, don't. If you're looking for a shoulder to cry on, you can forget it. I need all my sympathy and understanding to help my son come to terms with what you've done to him. I swear to you, I told Ron not to fit it himself. But you must have known Ron Dixon had no intentions of forking out for a gas fit, eh? No. At least he had the decency to own up to what had happened. Honest to God, Carmel, I don't know how many times I tried to tell you what I'd done. Try telling me, then. Leave it, his son. No. I want to know what he's done. Ben's accident was down to me. You what? I let Ron have the hose when I sold him the gas cooker, but I swear to you, I didn't think Ron would be stupid enough to try and fit it himself. Is this for real? Are you soft or what? You gave that dickhead Dixon a homemade bomb and kept your god shut about it all this time. You could have killed my brother. You might as well have done the state you left him in. He can't walk anymore, Sumo. He's gonna lose his job and everything down to you. Tim, please. No. And look what you've done to me, Mum. Look at you, scabby get. She's off her head over our Ben. Oh, I've got to go to work. And I'll tell you something, mate. If I'd have known all this when you were lying there trapped in that rubble, I would have took a hacksaw and cut off more than your bloody legs. No, I do not need to discuss it with Mr Farnham first. Because I am perfectly happy with the Preston's offer. Yes. Yes. You do that. Oh, pompous little prig. What was all that about? Would I like to discuss it with my husband first? What? The Prestons have made an offer on the house. Oh, really? <laughs> How much? Two grand less. Well, I could tell they were keen. <laughs> Isn't it marvellous? Yeah, maybe we could squeeze another thousand. Oh, no, darling, we can't do that. I've already accepted the offer. Without discussing it with me first? Oh, come on, Max. Two thousand less than the asking price, that's fine. Yeah, but, Susanna, that's not the point. I mean, it's not as if we're in any great rush to move. Well, you know how long these things take, and I really want to be settled in our new house before our son's born. Oh, um, have you sold the house? Oh, you know, that nice young couple with the baby. Oh, so you're selling off and moving away as soon as possible, then? Everything's going so well. Hiya. Hiya, babe. You all right? You look dead on your feet. Have you got a minute? There's something I need to tell you. Was it Carly? Is she all right? Oh, she's OK, but oh, something's happened. I've got to go and rinse these highlights off, Lens. Yeah. All right, I know you're busy. Look, I'll tell you what. Call back about 2 o'clock and uh, we'll have the place to ourselves for a bit then, eh? All right. I'll even throw in a free air to make wonders with these hands. Mrs. Farnham go. Well, I expect it's for the best, really. Why do you say that? Well, because of Matthew and Emily. And... <laughs> yeah, of course. 
But the house is full of memories of them. Well, we'll take the good ones with us, eh? Hi, hi. Hiya. Make sure you tell us when the house warming is. <laughs> See you later. What, you've sold the house? Yes. Well, so Susanna tells me. Oh, do I detect a small cloud on the horizon? Well, you know Susanna when she gets a bee in a bonnet. Listen, um, I don't suppose you fancy sharing your woes over a drink. Look, I'm sorry, I've got a few things to sort out with Susanna. About the house? I know you must be up to your eyes in it, but, well, I could do with a bit of moral support. Ah, uh, relationship problems, I take it. Isn't it always? Life out of me, then. Sorry, I thought you'd seen me coming. Oh, I was miles away. Listen, tell me to mind my own business if you want. But is everything all right between you and Carmel? You noticed, eh? Well, it's not like you two to fall out. It's more than a fallout, Rach. Surely it can't be that bad. Well, I don't think we've got any future together anymore. Don't say that. You and Carmel were made for each other. I love her, Rach. I never lose it. I've only got myself to blame. <sighs> Thanks, Paul. Hi, um, I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, no. I was just wondering how Ben was doing. He's hanging in there, Max. We're just waiting for the place for him at the spinal unit. Well, you send him our best wishes next time we see him. Yeah, sure. I won't forget how he helped Susanna after the car accident, so... If there's anything we can do to help, please, just ask. Yeah, thanks, Max. He's a very brave and compassionate man. I hate to see his life ruined after a, a stupid accident. Look, please, um, I'm gonna have to go. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. Don't just come barging in here like that. Sorry, I never thought. You're all right, mate. Just go get yourself a coffee or something, will you? <laughs> but surely... Any feelings between them must have been dead and buried when this Marcus chap ended up in prison. So it only tells me. Well, I'm sorry, I, I don't see what the problem is. He was her first love. She had a baby by him. You don't just switch off those feelings because they're no longer convenient. <sighs> Happens all the time, Ollie. Me and Patricia, you and Belle, Marcus and Ellen haven't seen each other for 18 years. There's still something between them. I could feel it. But I'm not imagining this, Max. It was real. I could practically feel the chemistry between them. Oh, come on. It would have to have been the love affair of the millennium to keep those feelings alive after all these years. Well, maybe it was. Maybe love doesn't die if you never get the chance to grow tired of each other. We're talking about a teenage romance. You can't seriously believe that this man poses a threat to you and Eleanor now. If you'd asked me that a week ago, the answer would have been no. When I saw the way she looked at him, her eyes, they never left his face. It was as if somewhere deep inside, she still knew him. And if you want me to be honest, I'm terrified that if she had to choose between us, she choose him. How long are you going to be away for? Only a couple of nights. And anyway, it's a brilliant opportunity for him. Oh, good for Marcus. Why do you have to put him down all the time? I don't, Louise. That's really not fair. And you're not fair on him. All he's trying to do is make a fresh start. He's fooling you. He'll never change. I know what he's like. You don't. You may have dumped him before I was even born, but he's still my dad, and I want to have a real relationship with him. Look, no matter what you think, I am glad you have found him. I just want you to be aware of the kind of person he is. I know what he's like. 
How can you? You've only known him for a couple of weeks. And you haven't even seen him in 18 years. He's grown up and moved on. He's not into all that anarchy and violence anymore. You're wrong about him, Louise. No, you're the one who's wrong. Why can't you just get it into your head that people can change? So do you reckon Sumo's more to blame than Rondico? Well, if Sinbad hadn't given the O's, Ron would never have fitted the cooker. And then me and the braid would still be in one piece. So what was the divvy playing at? Who knows? One thoughtless act of stupidity and I get to spend the rest of my life on wheels. So what are we going to do about it? In case you haven't noticed, I'm not in the fit state to do anything about it. Can't even go to the bog on my own. I have to wait for some nurse to come and sort me out. I am a cripple. And unless some miracle occurs, I'm going to spend the rest of my life getting pushed around in a wheelchair. Well, I'll sort Sumo and Rondico. Just leave it, mate. Let the authorities deal with it. Oh, yeah. Give them a slap on the wrist. Tell them not to be naughty again. No. I want them two to pay for what they've done to you and my mum. And all I want is to try and find a way to live like this. What I don't need is you getting in any more trouble. And nor does me mum. She's got enough on her plate at the moment. Right. Don't go doing anything stupid. I want you to promise me that if there's any punishment to be handed out, it's not going to be your name on the death warrant. Good. Now go tell that nurse and need her again. And close them curtains on your way out, will you? What do you think that is? I guess it's because they're scared of letting anyone get too close to them. And once you really open yourself up to another person, allow yourself to be completely honest with your feelings, well, you make yourself extremely vulnerable. Run the risk of getting hurt. I think we've both been there, Max. I know. Maybe it's easier to keep everything on the surface and not let it go too deep. Do you really believe that? No. But do you think that's what Ellen has done when her relationship with Marcus went so disastrously wrong? With me, yes. But it's still there, Max. All the passion, warmth. I could see it in her eyes. But not when she looks at you. No. But I'd give anything to see her look at me, the way she looked at Marcus. Gonna have to sort those split ends out, Lynn. Do my reputation no good. You happy? Yeah. Come on, you're gonna tell me what's bothering you. It's scary. How come he's back on your mind all of a sudden? Oh, he's decided to crawl out of whatever hole he's been hiding in for the past two years. So where is he now? I don't know. But he was outside this morning. Why didn't you tell me, Lynn? I didn't want to bother you. I knew you were busy. I thought you and me were supposed to be a team. And anyway, I've got ears back on the scene. It means we can go ahead with the divorce. We could be married by Christmas. You know I want that more than anything, but well, it's not that simple. Surely he wants to get things sorted after all this time. Oh, I don't think he gives a toss either way. So what's he back for? He's blackmailing me, Peter. If I want a divorce, I've got to pay him for it. Oh, come on, Lindsay. He's winding it up. You don't know what he's like. He'd do anything for easy money. Well, he's out of luck this time, isn't he? Well, surely we can find the money somehow. Even if we did have the money, it wouldn't stop there. He'd just keep up the stakes every time he felt like it, wouldn't he? I know, but he says he wants access to Kylie. Well, he's a dad. We can't really stop him, can we, Lens? You don't know what he's like, Peter. Hey, you've got me to deal with that scumbag from now on. So stop worrying. If he tries any funny business, we'll sort him out. Are you 
okay. Why did he have to come back and spoil everything? I'd only just found her, Ollie. And now it looks like I'm gonna lose her again. Max, have you got a minute? Yeah. Is everything all right? Yeah, um, I just wanted to have a word with you, you know, about the amnio. You, you're going to go ahead with it? Well, you want me to, don't you? <sighs> well, of course, it's your decision, but uh, yes, I do. I really wasn't prepared for Alice when she was born, and it took me a long time to come to terms with a child with Downs. Um, what happens if this baby's the same as Alice? Well, nothing. Uh, I mean, we go ahead with the surrogacy as planned. <sighs> I hope so, Max, because I need to know that if something is wrong, you and Susanna are 100% behind this deal. Of course we are. But if there is a problem with the baby, then, well, it gives us enough time to prepare ourselves before he's born. Or time to opt out and leave me to cope on my own. I swear to you that that's not gonna happen. He's our child. Susanna and I will take full responsibility for him, whatever the outcome of the test is. Yeah, well, I hope so, because it's not just your lives that could be affected by this, you know. See ya. So, are you saying that the explosion was your fault? If I hadn't given non dicks and arrows, it would never have happened. And Ben wouldn't be lying in the Aussie now with a pair of knackered legs. Yeah, but if you told him not to fit it... Makes no difference, Rach. It's still down to me, the whole flaming mess. You're only trying to help a mate. It's backfired, hasn't it, eh? I'm gonna be the original Billy No Mates around here when this gets out. Even Carmel can't stand to be near me. She's just worried about Ben. It's more than that, Rach. We've lost it. We'll never get back on course after this. But she loves you. Not enough to forgive me for what I've done to her, Ben. God, that lad must hate me. Of course he doesn't. Ben knows it was an accident. He's still a young fella, Rach. What's he got to look forward to if he can't walk, eh? He's going to spend the rest of his life hating me. Why don't you go and see him? Talk to him. I'm going to be the last person he's going to want sat by his bed. You don't know he feels like that. No. I don't want to go there upsetting the lad. It'll only make matters worse. Well, maybe Ben needs to see you and talk about what happened. I don't think I can face seeing him like that, right? Lying there helpless while some young nurse does everything for him. And how do you think Ben feels about that? What can I know? You don't know anything. My son's been going through all kinds of pain and suffering because of you. And you're too much of a bloody coward to go down there and face them. I wish to God I'd have known what kind of a man you were before I got mixed up with you. Oh, hello, darling. I thought you'd be over in Grants by now. Uh, no, 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 I came back with my briefcase. Oh, well, just as well. I found a wonderful house I wanted to go and see. Look, I really think it's a possibility. Um, <clears throat> yeah, looks fine. Well, you might at least pretend to be interested. Well, no, I just think that uh, things are moving too fast, that's all. Well, moving was your idea in the first place. Yes, yeah, I know it was. Max, Jackie Dixon is expecting our son in September. I want to be moved and settled into our new house by then. And why all of a sudden have you taken a back seat about the baby? I mean, you haven't even mentioned that next week is the latest that Jackie can have the amnio. No. Because we all agreed she wasn't having it. <laughs> You're not changing your mind, are you? I don't think you realise how important this is, especially given my past history. Well, of course I do. But we all agreed that we'd have the baby, whatever the circumstances. Yeah, and the circumstances could result in a baby with Downs. Now, surely you must know that. And I know how much I want this baby. This is our son, Max. And no test on earth is going to convince me he isn't perfect. Look, all I'm saying is it's better to know what we're facing. I mean, how would you feel? How would you feel about having a child like Alice? I'd love him, Max. The same way I love Matthew and Emily. Well, you couldn't bear to touch Alice when she stayed with us last summer. And that's not fair, Max. We just lost our children. I was hanging by a thread. 
And besides, Alice is Patricia's child, not mine. And mine. And I know how hard it can be coping. It takes up so much time and patience. Total commitment. That's the same with any child. What's happened? Is something going on? Is it Jackie? No, 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 no. Just... I've just been thinking about things, you know, just thinking how difficult it was with Alice. I saw you coping, Max. I saw what you went through with Alice. And I understand the difficulties of bringing up a child like her. No, you don't, Susanna. You haven't got the faintest idea. And the truth is, you, you don't want to know. That's an awful thing to say. Well, no more awful than pretending to ignore the possibility that our son could be, or may not be, well, perfect. But I still love him, the way you love Alice. Of course I love her. She's part of me. I love her so much that it hurts not being able to see her. Seeing the way that she's growing and developing. All the little things in life, but... God, I remember... I remember also how much it hurt when Alice was born. Everyone says that you have to cope, but... Uh, I, I don't want you to have to go through that, Susanna. That's not why we got into all this. We are trying to replace Matthew and Emily and not, God forgive me, not Alice. We are paying Jackie Dixon for a normal, healthy, perfect baby. So what if it's not? I know, I know the risks are small given Jackie's age, but even if, even if the odds are one in a million, what if? What if we are that one? It's all beach balls and bed sheets next on 4 when a toga party brings out the animal at a Turkish resort as we join the hidden cameras in the tourist trap. about the Omnio now. Seems like I can't win with Max and Suzanne either way. I've already told you what I think. You've got to do what's best for you and blow what the Farnham's think. Yeah, but it's not that easy, is it? Especially with us living here. And besides, it's not my baby, is it? It's Max and Susanna's. Not till you hand it over on September the 9th, it isn't. So if you don't want to have that test, then don't. Oh, you've changed your tune since last week. You were all for me. I haven't done then. Well, it's not up to me, is it? Or the Farnham's. Yeah, but Max is really worried that this baby's gonna be like Alice. He just wants to know so that he can get his head sorted before it's born. And what happens if it isn't the Dan's child? It's the Farnham's problem, not yours. Get real. If you present here with a handicapped child, your precious contract will end up in the bin. Oh! 
All right, for some. What time do you call this? Don't you dare, Greg Shadwick. I was up here in the midnight oil all night while you were lying in your pit snoring your head off. You're not still worried about that constructive dismissal case, are you? Afraid so. I thought you said the ginger one was going to take the money and run. Greg, I don't know what she's up to anymore, but there's definitely something that girl isn't telling me. You can only wait with the facts, Mark. If the girl's not being honest with you, she's only got herself to blame if it all goes pear-shaped. You're the union rep, not a councillor. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, love. Hey, you're not bad for a fella, are you? Well, you know, caring, sharing. See you later, Mr Perfect. Hey, I want my tea on the table by half five, sharp. Oh, yeah. Well, if you leave your van out, I'll wash and wax it before I run your back. Going to work? Um, yeah. Oh, well, a bit early. I thought you'd have time for coffee. Uh, no, sorry, I've got a delivery to see to. Jackie, have you thought any more about our conversation yesterday? Yeah, of course I have. You gonna have the test? I don't know. I just need a bit more time to think about it. See you later. Love them all equally, don't you? Well, I didn't at first, but yeah, yeah, I, I love them all. Equally. <sighs> well, in different ways. <laughs> I remember I was flying when Matthew was born. <laughs> I couldn't believe that the rush of love I, I felt for him when I first held him. And I was worried sick when you were carrying Emily because I didn't think I would love her as much as Matthew, but but I did. It was the same with Thomas. Another child. Somehow your heart expands to hold them all. And by then, I, I expected it would always be like that. Until we had Alice. I didn't love her. I didn't want her. Because she wasn't part of the equation. Three beautiful, perfect children. And Alice. I couldn't hold her, couldn't touch her, I <laughs> couldn't even look at her at first. I wanted her gone, out of the picture, because she didn't fit in with the rest of it. I suppose, in a way, I didn't really want to love her, because if I did, it would acknowledge in some way that, that she was mine. My daughter, the child I was supposed to love. But you love her now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very much so. I... <sighs> but still painfully, I mean, it has to be worked at. Learnt, had to be shown, taught her, taught her qualities. <laughs> My own child. It hurts, Susanna, it really hurts, because I... I could never love her for herself. You're a flame and union wreck. You're supposed to be on her side. It's not a case of taking sides, Jan. I just want to get to the bottom of all this. Ginger told you what happened. Pig Martin put those chickens in a locker just to get rid of her. I know all that. He's sown his oats with a bit of a kid, and now he doesn't want to hang around to drop a in it. It's as simple as that. No way, there has got to be more to it than just that. Don't be naive, Mark. Well, 
what has got you doing as dirty work? You sold a pack of lies from the word go. Yeah, and what about Ginger? She's hardly let Miss Honesty. No, but she's one of us. And she's being victimised. Yeah. And I might push this constructive dismissal thing much further. No factory could grind to a halt. That's not your worry, Mark. You're here to make sure management don't ride roughshod over the lot of us. And if you can't see that, you might as well hand in your union card right now. What subject did you say you're applying to teach? History. Just as well it is in English. There's two R's in curriculum and only one L. Yeah, I was a bit pushed for time. Oh, there's quite a lot of work needs doing on this, you know. Well, I was hoping you'd tidy it up for us, you know, make it look professional. Mm, well, I'll have to check with the boss first. What about? Um, just my CV. Jimmy's applying for a teaching job at Manor Park Camp. Just a formality, you know. Been doing the job for months. And I take it you want Katie to type up your CV? Yeah. Um, I was going to ask Danny to do it, you know, on the, uh, he's up to his neck, isn't he? GCSEs and that. You do know there are two R's in curriculum? Yeah, and one L. I thought you wouldn't mind, you know, with us being neighbours and that like. All right, just this once. As long as my work takes priority. Thanks, Al. I'll do it in my dinner, I'll drop her off on the way home. You're a star kid, I cheers. Oh, nearly forgot. Picture of your kid in there. Thought you might want to keep it for the album. See you later. See ya. in the dining room with the other managers. And I thought me and you were supposed to be mates. It's not personal, you know, Margie. You could have fooled me. Look, I just believe you should go all the way with this constructive dismissal. Cos if you don't, the management are just going to think they can walk all over us. Yeah. Well, I've had a word with Ginger. She feels exactly the same way. So what did you tell her? It's like you said, Jan, I'm a union rep. So if she wants me to fight in the corner, that's what I'm going to have to do. Yes, nice one, girl. And just make sure you screw those pigs into the ground. Hey, I wouldn't go cracking the champagne out in a vibe. If you know the press gets hold of this, this new shared issue could come right cropping. Let the management worry about that. You're doing the right thing, and that's what's important. Oh, yeah. And I'd be the first to remind you of that if me, you, and the rest of this lot end up on the door. Oh. I had my 20 week scam last week. Well, with the father already having a downed child, um, I was a bit worried that my baby's going to be affected and all. <sighs> I hope that's what you'd say. Um, so could you fit me in as soon as possible, then? Oh, that's great. What time on Friday? OK. And it will be Dr Barker, won't it? See you Friday. Bye. Hiya, love. Hey, I wouldn't mind a blue if you make him one. Milk and sugar? Yeah, one sugar, plenty of milk. Coming right up. Provide you do me a favour and all. Well, just tell me the time and the place, I'm all yours. How does our place sound first thing Monday morning? I've already told you, mate, Betty Boo, I'm going as fast as I can. Oh, well, no flat, no tea. Oh, come on, love, give us a break. Sorry, you can't hear yet. <sighs> Women. I keep thinking Gary's going to jump out at me. Don't let him get to your limbs. As soon as off of his sad little plan doesn't work. Yeah, but you don't, don't know him like I do. I mean, if he's capable of planting drugs in his own little girl's teddy, goodness, what else he's got up his sleeve? Are you really that scared of him? Me and Mike spent weeks in the Bangkok jail because of him. I won't forget that in a hurry. Parklands, maybe we ought to tag your mum and dad. He's back on the scene. I don't want them looking over the shoulder every two minutes as well. Better safe than sorry, Lens. I think we should all be on our guard from now on, especially where Carly's concerned. Your eyes. There you go. Nice and strong. Thought you might need it. I'm sorry, Katie. I've got to go out. But Mr Matthews will be here any minute. His case is being heard on Monday. Well, could you uh, give him my apologies and uh, reschedule him for tomorrow? Well, what about the rest of your appointments, your diary's chocker? You just have to sort it out the best you can. Is something wrong or...? No, of course not. I just have to see someone.
a slimy little get. What's he think he's playing at, eh? Trying to put the frankness on you like that? Nah, it's just Gaddy doing what he's best at. Where does he think we're gonna get the money to pay him for this divorce? Well, from what Lindsay was saying, I don't think he's too bothered about that. But you know what, Gaddy's like, he doesn't care about anyone except himself. I mean, he hasn't even seen his own daughter in over two years, and now he's using her to make some easy money. You know what? He's saying he wants regular contact with her, at least until he gets what he wants. Oh, is he now? Well, I'm telling you, he's got no chance. Let him show his face around here and I'll bloody have him. After what he put our Lindsay and little Carney through in Bangkok. Can't we call the police, get some sort of an order put on him? Oh, I doubt it. He hasn't actually done anything. Yes. Except demand money with menaces. Yeah, but it's his word against mine, Dad. God, he's a nasty piece of work, isn't he? What is he doing, anyway? Still walking around out there? I thought Big Dave, he was supposed to have dealt with it. Big Dave. Don't start with me, Jimmy. As far as I knew, Gary was sorted. Yeah, but maybe he got away or went into hiding. Big Dave, he's probably forgotten all about him by now. <laughs> you are joking, aren't you? No. Big Davey is not going to forget what Gary did to his brother. So, I'm telling you, if he tries anything again, girl, I am going to be on that blower that fast, the wires will be steaming. Well, that, that's great news, Jackie. Um, thank you. As long as you understand that I'm having the amnio because I want to. And don't I get a say in all of this? Well, actually, Susanna, no. I'm the one who's having this baby, and I'm the one that needs to know that you're not going to pull out of the surrogacy if you don't like what I deliver in September. I think Jackie's concerned that if there are any problems with the baby, then we're going to renege on the deal. But, but there's nothing wrong with the baby. The scanner's confirmed he's developing perfectly. Susanna, we need to be sure. It makes sense to find out now if there is any problems. But what if our baby's perfectly all right and we lost it because of the amnio? The chances of that happening are, are pretty small, darling. You know that. It's still a risk, Max. Yeah, and so is the chance of this baby being born with Down syndrome. And I don't want to run the risk of you and Max tearing up that contract the minute you clap eyes on and leaving me to cope on my own. Look, I've contacted the Liverpool General and they're willing to give me an amnio on Friday. Now, with or without your blessing, that's what I'm going to do. Because I need to know exactly what I'm dealing with here. Hello, Eleanor. I just want you to listen to what I have to say. <clears throat> I'm here because... because I'm concerned about the amount of time Louise is spending with you. I've hardly seen her since you came on the scene. Look, I know she's your daughter and you want to spend some time getting to know each other, I want you to remember that she is still just a young and impressionable girl. She's got her whole life ahead of her. University, a travel, a, a good job, hopefully. And what she doesn't need right now is you filling her head with your own particular brand of nasty political dogma. She has to find her own truth, Marcus. And I'm scared that if sh she allows herself to be indoctrinated into your way of thinking, then she's going to end up in the same sort of danger that I was exposed to at her age. You might have managed to convince Louise that you've seen the light, come out of the other side as some sort of cleaned up crusading hero. But I know you, Marcus. I know how you use and abuse people. How you manipulate them into your own way of thinking. But not this time. And 
not with my daughter. This stops here and it stops now. You leave Louise alone. How have you been for the last 18 years, Eleanor? You haven't been listening to a word I've said of you. I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here because I'm worried about what you're doing to my daughter. Your daughter? Oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was under the impression that Louise was a result of a relationship between the two of us. A very good relationship, as I recall. Don't, Marcus. You should have told me about her, Eleanor. Because by my reckoning, I've 18 years of fathering to make up. Oh, no, you haven't. You stay away from her. Or what, Ellie? If you do anything, anything to harm her, anything at all. Like abandoning her, you mean? <laughs> it's good to see you've got some of the old fire left in you. Now you've joined the establishment. So what's up at your well, then? It's full of moaning bloody women. Oh, thanks for sharing that, love. Well, you shouldn't have asked. Not your cage. Jack Dixon and Katie, what's her name? Pair of witches. <laughs> Never. Bet you to be wanting you to finish the job next. Thanks for sharing that, love. So who rattled yours? <sighs> Guess. That'll be the ginger one, then. She definitely wants to fight for this constructive dismissal. So what happens now? We've got to prepare an initial statement for the tribunal. A lot of work, Mark. It's down to you to get the best deal you can. Which is why I started trying to prove you've hardship in case the ruling goes against her. Good move, that, babe. Yeah, that's what I thought. So she showed me this. Hey, Grand, where did you get all that? Well, it's £6,000 a year take home pay and her mother and widow's allowance. That's what I'd like to know, no? Hey, I love. Can I have a look at this? What? Your curriculum vitae. If it's infectious, Jimmy, I don't want it anywhere near me. Oh. Got enough problems in this house. Is Carla coming down to have this? I'll go and see. Peter's reading her a story. No, that's all nice. I'll save her a bit if she's not hungry, yes? I'll get it. So, what do you reckon this nil marks to then? I don't know, Jimmy. But whatever it is, it can only mean one thing, can't it? Yeah. Trouble with a capital T. Yeah, you and who else? Get him out, Jim. Is this your new fella? How many's that you've had now? Right, right, that's it. Oh, no, go no, back! No, 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 get out! No, 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 Come on, now. Just get him out! I'm not shifted until we got things sorted. Oh, is that right? Jackie, give me that number. Jimmy, will you get him out of the house now? Listen, Big Davey can convince you, eh? Oh, where have you been? It's been sorted between me and him for years. You're bluffing! Go on, then. Give him a bell, cos, let's face it, soft lad, you're used to looking stupid. You what? Jimmy! Leave it! Get the motor and I'm going to kill him! And what if the test proves there is something wrong with our son? What happens then? I don't know. But we're going to have to sort this out, because I don't think I could cope bringing up a handicapped child on my own. Why do you keep insisting we'd abandon him if there was something wrong? Just being realistic. Would you still want him? He's our son, Max. Of course I'd want him. <sighs> You'd still rather have this, though, wouldn't you? Oh, don't, Max. You can't ask me that. You can't ask any parent that. Yeah. We're not just any parents, are we, darling? We have lost two beautiful children and... Rightly or wrongly, we are trying to replace them with this baby. 
because we can't have any of our own. Oh, don't, Max. I have to, Susanna, because I love you, and I don't want you to confuse the possible reality of our son with this dream you have inside your head. Matthew and Emily have gone forever, and nothing we can say or do can can bring back what we've lost. I know that, Max. This baby is our future, and we have to be sure that we can cope with whatever this child brings into our lives. I want it how it was, Max. And I know we've lost that. And you're right. I want our son to be normal, just like Matthew and Emily were. And I don't know if I could cope with a handicapped child either. All I want to do is see if my wife's considered me offer. Offer? But we've got no money, Gary. And we wouldn't give it to you, even if we were rolling in it. Pity. Looks like it's to postpone the wedding then, eh? Reckon she's worth waiting for, do you? You scumbag! I ought to run my fist down your throat. Go on, Peter, do it! One hit, big fella, and then I'm out of here. You're not worth scraping me knuckles on. So, like I was saying, I reckon this divorce could go on for years. Just as well we're willing to wait, isn't it, Linz? Too right. Now, why don't you go and crawl back under your stone? I had enough from you last time, and I am not going to sit back and let you do it again. <laughs> Ready for a fight, then, eh? Any time, any place. Family court, do you, then? You are? Soon see how much aggro you get up to in front of a judge. What are you on about, soft lad? That's my daughter upstairs. And if you don't want me out of your life, I'm going to be in it every single week when I come to pick up Kylie. Get it? Next on four, the man who dreams of turning a Rochdale carvery into a temple of haute cuisine. Chef for the night, coming up. Everyone ready for this? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, this is so exciting. It's the king of Friday night. You got a message for the viewers for the weekend? Have a great one. Now go on. <laughs> Texans aren't prepared for this kind of nightmare, sir. We gotta work fast. We've gotta stop that show from going out. Just simply pop them on and you won't hear a thing. Join Johnny Boy Revel and his wheels of steel tonight on 4. Rocking and rolling with Sybil after Brookside.
Seems ages since I heard them laugh, held them in my arms. A lifetime ago. They were beautiful, weren't they? Mm. The best. You know, I've been thinking about what we were talking about yesterday. The amniocentesis. And you're right. I do want our baby to be a normal, healthy child. I want us to be a family again. Feel like we were when Matthew and Emily were alive. And if the amnio shows that our son has Downs? Then we have to ask Jackie what she wants to do about it. She's carrying the baby, Max, and it's up to her to decide whether she wants to go through with the pregnancy or not. So, you're saying that you'll go along with whatever she decides to do? She knows how I feel. And we have to trust she'll do the best for all of us. Check mirror. And break off. Indicate. And away we go. Keep an eye out for cyclists, pedestrians, and stray dogs. and I have discussed this thoroughly and well, we want you to know if there is something wrong with the baby we agree to abide by whatever decision you come to concerning the baby's future. So you want me to decide what happens to him? Well we think it's only right and fair as you're the one who has to cope with the pregnancy and the birth. Are you saying that you want me to have a termination if the amnio says that the baby has downs? We're saying that we'll agree with whatever you decide to do. And what if I don't want to have an abortion? Are you still going to want the baby then? I know what it's like to bring up a child with Downs. And yes, Susanna, we will love our son and give him all the attention that he needs. So, let me get this right. You're going to support me, whatever I decide to do. And if you do decide to terminate... Well, maybe we can all try again when we've got over the disappointment. Right, well, I think we'd better get on the way to the, uh... Do you mind if I go with Jackie? No, of course not, darling. You sure you'd be all right? Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't think I could cope, but... I really feel the need to go. Yeah, that's fine by me. Oh, do you mind taking Julia for her driving theory test this afternoon? She's terribly nervous. I did promise to support her. Right, uh... Looks like we've got quite an afternoon ahead, eh? <laughs> it's one of the biggest literary events of the year. Everyone who's anyone misses it at their peril, authors, agents, publishers. Really? Even humble bookshop managers like me have got the date printed in their diary in blood. Which is why I was prepared to sell my soul to get a ticket for the wonderful woman in my life. You got a ticket for me? Mm. I thought we could make a week of it. We haven't spent any real time together in months. Well, I can't just up six and go. I mean, I've got a practice to run, a clients to see, court dates. Well, it's not until next month. I've got plenty of time to arrange things. But what about Daniel and Louise? <laughs> it's not a problem, Eleanor. Why are you putting obstacles in the way? I'm not. I mean, of course, I'd love to go away for a week, but things aren't quite that simple. You're right. Yeah. Just want to get it over and done with. I hate hospitals. Mm. Me too. Too many bad memories. 
I know you and Max think this is a relatively safe procedure, but have you any idea of the sorts of risks that are involved? Well, that midwife we saw last week reckoned that about one in 200 babies spontaneously abort after they've done an amnio. About the same odds as the baby being born with Downs. Susanna, we're doing the right thing. We've got to know one way or the other. I meant what I said earlier. We won't put any pressure on you if the test does prove positive. Thanks. Max and I will stand by you right through to the end, whatever you decide. I can book us into a really good hotel. We can see the sights, take in a show. Well, at least say you'll think about it. It's no good, Ollie. I can't come with you. Why are you being so pig-headed? You don't understand. Oh, you're damn right I don't. Give me one good reason why we can't take some time off and spend one lousy week together. I can't come with you because I won't be around next month. I'm leaving. see that I'm leaving because if I'm not around then she'll have to go home again back to Tom and Joan where she'll be safe and what about me don't my feelings come into it Ollie please all this time we've been together the weeks and months I've spent supporting you trying to understand loving you I'm sorry doesn't that count for anything do I really mean so little to you no because if I am so unimportant to you, if that's how you really feel about me, then I don't want you here. You may as well go back home, pack your bags, and leave right now. Yes, congratulations on passing stage one of your trials. Hey, I'll be bearing rubber this time next week. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my car, you won't. Oh, don't you worry, love. I'm going to get myself a little run around. One of them corsets. Did you put a brand in here, love? Uh, yeah, a double one, but don't tell Jackie or she'll be giving me my cards. Oh, it'll be our little secret, eh? <laughs> Is Jackie back yet? Um, no, I, I think she must have just got held up at the wholesalers. I thought you said her and Mrs Farnham were going on a spending spree. Yes, uh, she did mention that she was dropping in on one of her supplies on the way back. Yeah, yeah, of course, that's what I meant. See ya. Are you and Kylie free tonight? Yeah, why? I booked a table at the Oaks for seven. Thought we'd give Kylie a bit of a do, seeing as she's only got another week before she goes back to school. Oh, thanks, Peter. That's lovely. She'll be made up. Oh, well, you two have been through loads over the last few weeks, haven't you? Yeah, well, I said we can put it all behind us, eh? And now you, uh, so not the divorce, I reckon we can start making a few plans, eh? Mm, there's no escaping now, feeling. We might have that Christmas wedding after all. Mm -hmm. Ollie, I have to get her away from him. No, you don't. Not like this. Stay here and face it. Deal with it. You can't spend the rest of your life running away. Yes, I can. And, and I have to, if it means keeping my daughter safe. I let her down once before, Ollie, and there's no way I'm ever going to do that again. 
And if you and I are the casualty in all this, then I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Well, stay with me. I can't. I love you, for God's sake. And I'd do anything to stay and share that love, to build a real life together. But I'm frightened of the damage Marcus will do to her. And I have to put her first. Can't you see that? All I see is you putting yourself first, like you've always done. Ollie. You're scared of feeling, Eleanor. You've wrapped yourself up so tightly that you're scared of opening up whatever there is in here and sharing it. That's why you put Louise up for adoption 18 years ago. No. And that's why you've been running away ever since. It's not Marcus you're afraid of. It's yourself. It's a bit of a game and a few chicken stuffed up your blouse as kids. And if I go into bat on your behalf and I find out that you've been telling me porkies... I know what you're thinking, but I haven't been on the fiddle. I wasn't, Margie, honest. OK. But something dodgy has been going on, hasn't it? And that Martin's in on it. Come on, kids. I will be on your side. He's been running a scam with another packaging firm. Yeah. Selling meat out to discard bin so they can repackage it and sell it on. That meat is in there because it's not fit to eat. But that's why they sell it to the little shops and that. Ones that won't ask too many questions. Who do you come into all this? I changed all the records and that. 8,000 was your cost. Slamming it. He must have been raking it in. No one's who wants to get rid of it. When he dumped me, I threatened to tell the MD what was going on. That's when he planted the chickens in your locker. He said he'd tell the busies if he opened my mouth. I was frightened, Margie. It was my words against his. I never would have said anything if he hadn't have made me. Oh, come on, girl. You'll be all right. What are you going to do now you know everything? And first, I'm going to finish my drink. And then I'm going home for a long, hard think. I was just a kid myself. I couldn't look after a baby. I was a student. I had no money. Marcus was in prison and my father didn't want to know. I was frightened. I was alone. And there was no way I could ever give my daughter the kind of life she deserved. But you never even tried. Because I loved her. I gave her up for adoption so she could have all the things that I couldn't give her. And because you didn't fancy yourself as a single mum with no future? No. You wanted university, a career. And what you didn't want was a kid screwing up your plans. That's not true. Have you any idea how much that hurts? How much pain and guilt I've been through? Every day, wondering if I'd made the right decision or if I'd just been thinking of myself. But I made that decision when I was 18, Ollie, and I've had to live with it ever since. And did you make the right choice? Would you do the same thing again? I don't know. Yes, I wanted a career. Is that so wrong? And I couldn't. No. I didn't want my baby. I didn't want a baby. I didn't want her. And what now? What do you want now, Eleanor? I want to stop running. Be normal. I want a home and a family and... I want Louise. And you. I love you so much, Molly. <sighs> I mean, I love you. I know. Loving you too much. Of running away. But... but you don't have to go. 
We can face Marcus together. But how can you love me? Knowing what I'm like, what I've done. Love, it isn't an exact science. It's, it's feeling, giving. I know what I did was wrong. If I hadn't let Ron Dixon have that hose, none of this would have happened. And I reckon you and me would have gone plodding off happily into the sunset. But I did let him have that hose. And because of me, your son's ended up with a load of pain and heartache and a pair of useless legs. Oh, you've noticed, have you? And you're right. I can go on saying I'm sorry for the rest of my life, but it's not going to make one bit of difference to what happens to your Ben. But I am sorry, Karen. And I'd give anything to put things right between us. I love you. And I don't want to lose you over one stupid mistake that I'm going to regret for the rest of my life. Stupid mistake? I crippled your son, but it was just one stupid mistake. I know you didn't mean it. But I just can't share my life or my bed with a man who did that to my son. Well, I can move into Mel's room. I she... can't anymore, Simbad. I can't. I'll end up hating you, and I don't want to do that. So what are you saying? Me and the kids will move out. I'll get us a flat or something. You don't have to do that. I do. But there's three of you. It'd make more sense if I moved out. But it's your house, Simbad. I bought it for us. Find somewhere tomorrow. So is that it then? Me and you? I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. for a little chat with my wife? Yeah. Well, you can do that through me solicitor in future. Fighting talk. You almost brought all that on. I'm just seeing you. I'd almost forgotten what a nasty little specimen you can be. Yeah, I'm really quaking here, Linz. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have my divorce, Gary. Whatever it takes. You reckon? Yeah, I do. Well, I'd have a read of that if I were you before you go shooting your mouth off. Because like I was telling you, if you want a divorce, it's gonna cost you. Big style. What? You want to see Carly twice a week? Doting father, aren't I? But you haven't even bothered with her in over two years. Well, I'm bothering now. I warned you what would happen if you weren't prepared to cough up. And I've got all the time in the world, Lindsay. And I can go on playing daddy to our little girl for as long as it takes. No way. You're not going anywhere near my daughter. I'd do that again if I were you. So, how did it go? Okay, I think. Yeah, fine. We should have the results seven to ten days. Oh, that long? It seemed like a lifetime. So, how are you feeling? Well, I'm a bit tired now. Mm -hmm. The doctor said she should rest for a couple of weeks. Yeah, so I decided to take a few days off and I'm going to put my feet off for a bit. Well, sounds sensible, eh? And at least I'll be here to look after her. Um, I'm going to have a bit of a lie down before we eat. That's a good idea. Well, when you wake up, why don't you give me a shout and I'll run you a nice hot bath? OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. OK. So, how did it go? Oh, Max. It was awful. And when I saw them put that needle into Jackie... Oh, come on. We'll just get through the next ten days, eh? Oh, Max, it'll be all right, won't it? Yeah, of course it will. Well, I hope so. Because I really don't think I could go through all this again.
Had a busy day, have you, you fat slob? Just leave it, eh? Well, what? Don't you want to know how my brother is? Just get up me way, Tim. He had another one of them do's when I was there. Crying out with the pain he was. Grabbing onto me hand. And I come back here, and you're sat on your jacksie watching the flaming telly. Tim, please. What's he still doing here, Mum? How can you even stand looking at him after what he's done to our Ben? He's going in the morning. No way. He's not hanging around here till then, laughing at us. You're going now. Get out. Do that again. Now. You'll what? Blow me up. Cripple me. Get out of here before I put you in Rosie and all. Get out. I've enough of you, because I haven't known. Now get your bags packed and bloody get out! that the Brookside Omnibus begins at the earlier time of 5 to 5 tomorrow. Next tonight, comedy on four. Sybil gets another bite of the cherry and a nibble at an old dish in a couple of minutes. Brand new. Hello, anyone at home? Oh, sorry, mate. Uh, yeah, over here, I'll do. Hey, listen, thanks for picking them up for us. Hey, you're welcome. So you were on the windows before you had the shop? Yeah, had a great round. Used to do all these. Oh, seen all sorts through these windows. Yeah, well, don't be letting through mine. Is that an offer to do them? Well, nobody else does them. Oh, well, nice one. Don't sound too happy about it. Uh, cost you 350 a week. Call it three quid and the job's yours. Come on, I did get the lad as a cost for you. Uh, yeah, OK. So, listen, uh, do us a favour. Just keep mum about the preferential rates. What's their word? Good luck. Anyway, I thought you lived over there. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just putting these here for the time being, you know. Your missus got an aversion to ladders, has she? Nah, just me. A bit of a domestic, eh? <sighs> the mother of all domestics. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, listen, thanks for that, Greg. All right, mate. See, no sweat. see you later. See that. Hi, babe. Hi. Thought you were on late this week. I am, but I said to go in this morning to try and help source hot ginger. How do you mean? Well, believe it or not, she's been in with the general manager doing a food scan. They've been recycling meat, which was unfit for human consumption. What do you mean, recycling? Well, they've been getting the meat repackaging it, selling it on to other companies that's fresh. Well, she doesn't know. Well, don't be blaming yourself, love. You took what that girl said as gospel. I know, but it was more naive, me or ginger. Aye, aye. Hiya. All right, love. You took your time, didn't you? Yeah, well, then he would be starting late. And anyway, you said you were picking up them ladders for him. I said I'd be starting late. It's not too far for you to walk to the shops, is it? Sorry, it was my fault. We didn't get in till late. It made sense. I'm staying over. Sorry. That's all right. It's no problem. I'll see you later, OK? See ya. Eh, where have you been all night? What are you kicking off for? I mean, I was working all over the weekend. I've got to have some time off, man. Hey, hold on, son. You could have found your mum worries, you know. Look, I'm 20. I've had a great night. Let's not spoil the day. While you're living here, you can have the decency to let us know where you are. Mum, according to me, Dad, you went in with down a pen and wig and the top rank when you were 16. Yeah, but I had to have it on by half 12. Yeah, but it's all nighters and stuff now, isn't it? I mean, I don't really know what your problem is anyway. OK, well, I'll tell you. 
You've known that one. What, Katrina? You've known her for less than six months, and I think it's getting a little bit heavy, isn't it? We're well, just mates. Mates? What does her mum and dad say about you staying over? They haven't said anything. I mean, they're very progressive. They live in the 90s. Uh, what are they? Social workers? Look, me and Katrina just buzz off each other, and that's all there is to it. And look, I'm gonna get changed for work. Well, you could have supposed us a bit more. Margie's just enjoying himself. This Katrina will be the first in a long line of girls. Stop worrying, will you? You're gonna be on for lunch or what? Do you mean, will I be here to make you lunch? Well, if I had a kitchen, it might help. Hiya. How are you feeling? Oh, I've never spent so much time in bed, I'm still knackered. Ah. You're up. Yeah, although I think I'll just grab a quick call back and go back off for an hour. Oh, uh, Peter and Rachel both phone. Oh, um, is there any problems? No, I don't think it was anything major. Rachel was flapping a bit, but... Yeah, Rachel sounded as though she needed a bit of assistance. Oh, I'm sure she can cope. I mean, after all, you need the rest. Yeah. What is it Susanna says? Um, pregnancy isn't an illness. <laughs> I was more worried about the amnio. Yeah, but a trip over to work won't hurt, will it? I'm sorry, Jackie, discussing you like this, but... I'm uh... sure you can deal with it on the phone. Susanna, it was an amniocentesis, not an hysterectomy. I'll be as quick as possible, I promise. I'll put some tea on. Do you think it was wise to let her go? Well, can't wrap her up in cotton wool. Yes, but, you know, with an amniocentesis, there's always danger of miscarriage. And with her feeling so tired... Of... I think you're worrying just a little bit too much. Well, she'd be getting tired at this stage of the pregnancy anyway. Don't look for problems where they don't exist. Well, he's not staying at his mum's. Probably some dump of a flat somewhere now, Gary. What are you talking to him for? I don't want him anywhere near Carly, Mum. Look, you know he's going to be as awkward as possible about this. You've got to stay there calm. Calm? I feel like killing him. All he's trying to do is screw up me and Peter. Oh, well. Looks like that's working, doesn't it? Well, have you talked all this through properly with Peter? No, not yet. Don't try and source this all out behind his back, Lindsay. Put him in the picture. He might get fed up, Mum. All I do is bring him problems. Don't you see what I'm saying? Gary's been back for five minutes and you're letting this affect you and Peter. Do yourself a favour, get Peter involved. But if Peter's going to be Kylie's stepdad, it might help if he knew what he was getting himself into for once. Well, that's what's worrying me. That it'll all be too much hassle for him. Oh, you mean the way you haven't given him any hassle in the past? So you're going back on the ladders then? Well, nope. I've got to do something, haven't I? Yeah, but I mean, window cleaning, isn't that a step backwards for you? Well, maybe I just got too big for me boots. Opening the second hand shop? Come on, you're good at it. We'll try telling that to Ben. Anyway, I'm back on the windows. Fuck's sake, you've got a plaster on your leg. What are you going to specialise in? Bungalows? Yeah, well, it's coming off today. Yeah, but you can't go climbing up and down ladders so soon after that. Well, I've got to pay the mortgage. Oh, what do you mean for that house you're not living in? All right, don't rub it in, eh? Listen, you've got to talk to Carl. Am I in the way? No, that's bearing yours, you know that. You've got to talk to her. I've tried to, Mick, but she doesn't want to know yet. I'm knackered. What are you doing home anyway? I thought you were going down the library. I've been the doctors with me headaches. What sort of headaches? The doctor reckons it's high strain from all the revision I'm made to do. Those exams are important to you, son. So I got a job without any qualifications. Oh, are yeah. Filling bags of sand, a fine career move. Might be a bit easier than writing about physical and chemical weathering. What? Rocks, now the S-shape. It's geography. What happened to knowing your capitals and the continents, eh? Fed up with it, Dad. Look, you're on the last lap now, son. You're almost there. It's too hard. Look, you need your exams to get on in life. What happened to all your qualifications? Hey, I got me city and girls and catering. And having that made things a bit easier. Well, Simba didn't need any. Well, I wish I'd got me qualifications in plumbing. Why? Nothing, son. Look, isn't it time you got off to the library? Oh, hey, Dad. Look, we've all got to do work we don't like, you know. Yeah, but you get paid for doing that. Listen, I'll go through some of it with you and test you on a few things if you like. Ta. Is it true what Tinhead's saying? 
And what's he going on about now? He reckons he chinned you and threw you out. That's why you're here. And what do you think? He's blagging as usual. Spot on, son. Look, son, you get over there before little Timothy thinks he's king of the castle. <sighs> and how long have I been ordering stuff from you? Oh, look, I'll call you back later, OK? Oh, clown. This is our Michael list. Where is he? He said he had to go into town and all this arrived. <sighs> Tried to tell him we didn't need it, but you know what he's like. It's not your fault, Rach. I told our Michael I'd already restocked before I went to the hospital. Are you sure? Yeah, of course I am. You have done one or two things, you know, since. Oh, Rachel, I'm not that bad. My brain hasn't shrunk or nothing. Mind you, I'm so tired. I might have got it wrong. So what are we going to do? Well, where's Shelley and Kirsty? Well, Shelley's on holiday and Kirsty's off with her nerves again. Oh, that Kirsty is a waste of space. Well, when's Michael due back? Well, he's only nipped into town to get your dad some bedding. What? This is delivery and he's gone off shopping. Well, you told him to, Jack, remember? Perhaps you were a bit tired. Oh, yeah. It's just the woman I wanted. What is it? Well, can you come upstairs to the flats and check we've got the bathroom furniture in the right place? Well, isn't it on the plans? I'll only take you five minutes. And what about all these? <sighs> Just give us a minute, please, Rach. A line on a map showing areas of equal pressure is called a what? A nice old thing. No. Well, that's it. A nice old bar. Is that right? What? A nice old bar. Yeah, right. That's 12 out of 15. Doing all right, is he? Not bad. Just gotta remember all that stuff about Teutonic plates or whatever they are. Plate tectonics. Oh, it's the same thing. Why don't you go in the library, son? Yeah, I just need to get a drink next. Yeah, we'll get one on the way. Yeah, that's it. Well, take this. Yeah. Time I was paying me way. You staying here for a while then? Hey, just go, nosy old. It's only asking. Yeah, and I'm only telling you, so go on, on your way. It's all right, if I get a Mars bar, they change. Be brain and energy. Look, you can get it out of your pocket money. No, miss, it's all right, mate. Look, take that. Get Gemma something as well, all right? Thank you, kind little Simbad. Go on. Get that, mate. Yeah. Right, well, it's time I got down that fracture clinic and got this off. Yeah, and on your way, corner and see Carmel. Nah, she won't want to know. Simbad, get a grip, will you? It's all gone pear shaped. Look, you won't get anywhere if you don't talk. Just keep thinking about Ben lying here in that hospital and knowing I'm partly to blame. Listen, mate, you can't do anything about that now. You'd end up going to jail, though, couldn't I, eh? Man, you might make Ben feel a bit better knowing someone's going to take the rap for it. Ben won't think that. He's a fireman. He knows the job's got risks. But he was off duty, wasn't he? He wasn't wearing any safety gear or anything. Yeah. Why don't you go and see him? What? Well, ask him what he thinks. Look, I'm on your side, mate, but it might have helped knowing that you popped your head in, like. I don't think I could bear to see him now. Look, Sam, it'll make a difference to Carmel knowing that you've been to see her, son. Do yourself a favour, mate. When you get the plaster off, go up the ward. Test the water. Do you mind me? Yeah, I'm so hungry. I could eat a scabby dog. <laughs> I'll come get you one. So, when will the flop be ready? End of the week. We get the floor screened today and the bathroom sweet fitted. Then you should be able to move in. <sighs> Do you know what? I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it must be a bit cramped for you at the Farnham's. Yeah, well, it was good then to put us up. So were you related, like? Eh, no. I'm not being funny. It's just that people aren't that these days, are they? Anyway, see you later. See you later. I thought you weren't going to be in the Yeah, well, I've had to sort a few things out in the bar. Oh, Susanna's right. You should rest. Forget the bar. Max, I've got a double delivery. Staff off. All mics downtown. There's absolutely nothing I can do about it. As soon as the lunchtime rush has stopped, I'll come straight back over. Jackie? The lag has gone off and I've run off my feet. OK, Rachel, I'm coming now. OK. Jackie, I'll change the barrel. Max, will you stop treating me as if I'm about to go into labour? Rachel, will you stop treating me like a mill? And you might stop choice, but leaving a box up from the bar looks a mess. Hey, that's nice scene you're isn't it? I thought you were buzzing off Katrina. Never impose limits. Where does women concerned? Get out of it. Hello? Katrina for you? Yes. 
Oh, actually, what's happening? I am. Um, when? Where are you? What? Can you get her to stop phoning you on this? Well, how else are you supposed to get in touch? I don't care, it's for business and the battery gets run down. Well, I keep it here, don't I? Hey, don't be hard faced. What about your lunch? Dad, what a choice. Sitting here with you talking about RSJ's screed and eight before plasterboard. What half an hour, Katrina? Hey, I'll make sure it is half an hour. I want to get that bathroom finished to Sabby. You're mad. For you, yeah. How long have you got? Well, after last night. About 20 seconds until my dad blows it, so. Where can we go? Someone in ours. <laughs> no. Hang on, it's quicker this way. I bet Demi and Lauren were glad you're going to be back at school next week, weren't they, love? Yes, Nan. Yeah, made up, weren't they? It's last chance to draw all over a cast before she gets it taken off tomorrow. <laughs> Should have seen them dead excited, weren't they? Yeah. Right, you're going to be a good girl and look at your book and I'll bring you a drink through, eh? OK, Mum. Oh. So how did Peter take the news about Gabby, the doubting father? He wanted to kill him. <laughs> He'll have to get behind me in the queue. Yeah, but when I explained that Gabby had a solicitor's letter, we had to back down. Gabby's not interested in Karen. Oh, I know that. The longer he's around it, the more of a pest he'll become. Well, that's why you've got to get the law behind you as well. I was going to, Mum, but... Oh, I don't know. If this goes on too long, maybe Peter won't be bothered about getting married. Of course he will. Well, he says if Gaddy messes things up, he'll wait years for us to get married if he has to. What well, goes on him? Yeah, but he was dead keen a couple of weeks ago. And now Gaddy's on the scene. Well, he seems prepared to let it all slow down. Lindsay, the lad wants to marry you. He came back after all that Barry Grant stuff. Yeah, but you know what Gary can be like, the way he can work his way around people. It wouldn't surprise me if he's invited Peter out for a pint by next week. Well, there'd be no chance of that if he knew the old story, would there? Meaning? Meaning that Gary reached you. Yeah, well, there's no way you can find out about that, is there? Why? Well, it'll all be too much for him. I mean, the stuff about Mike Dixon and Bangkok and, and then Barry Grant. And now if he was to find out about Gary and what he did to me. Well, you sort it out then, Lindsay. Don't let Gary get the upper hand again. You fight him. And if he's got to be in Kylie's life, you make sure it's on your terms. Right, so it's two sandwiches, in it? One cheese salad and one chicken. Yep. Jackie gone back to the farnums? No, she's getting a bit of lager. We should take it easy. She was faffing around the salon this morning with Peter. Mm -hmm. Sat in the flat out with that Greg Shadwick. Well, that's because she's more likely to get knife in that Jason. Oh, I hadn't noticed myself. Well, then you need to get to the opticians for some glasses. Oh! Jackie? Oh! <sighs> You're on the park, is it? In? Oh, no, you should Shall I call a doctor? I think you'd better call an ambulance. It'll be all right. Can you stand back a bit, please? Oh, God, kids, it's in. What have I done? Oh. Yeah. Well, that won't be a problem. How many can you get me? Eh, uh, all right. First thing in the morning. Oh, thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. I thought you weren't coming back. You made for me to put the food on the table again. No, I've had a very lonely lunch all by myself. Where's that one? Doing what he does best, if you ask me. All right, Chase. All right, Sim. Um, so me dad got you the ladders then? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. All right. I hope you're going to bubble that scabby manager that's doing that stuff with the old food. How did you know about that? Well, me dad told me that manager's a right dog. No, I won't bubble anyone. And it's so confidential. Hey, don't be worrying about me. Confidentiality is the second most important tool of a window cleaner. Well, I have to be sure, anyway. What are you doing here? Olivia. I've never seen what's going on in Scotland with all that E. coli stuff. All sorts get quiet and people die. No one's gonna die. Yeah, and some idiot probably thought that with all those people. All right, son, don't get excited. Oh, so I suppose you'd be happy if anyone fed the disease pie to us? Of course I wouldn't. But your mum's got procedures to follow. Oh, what? Playing the management game? Hey, that's not the main issue. Oh, and didn't me dad getting shafted by management teach you anything, man? I think it was that concerned. I'm glad he is. What the hell am I going to do? 
Maybe you should go public. Are you not serious? Ginger and that general manager deserve to be locked up. Yeah, but you know there's a big investment going into the factory. The pair of them have been selling dodgy meat. Yeah, and if I go public, it means the health inspectors will come in, which means it won't be them, it'll be us, the factory, which might mean closure. Everyone's jobs will go. Well, what does Jan say you should do? <sighs> Still not really speaking. She do you want me to go public? Do it then, Mark. <sighs> no. Look, you've got to do something. I'll have to go and see that broadbent, the managing director. <sighs> if he isn't involved as well. The sooner she knows, the better. I shouldn't have lifted those crates. Don't tell her, will you? Of course not. It's going to be all right, you know. Sorry, I'll have to wait. I can see why my dad sells cars now. Yeah, I can see why they put that there. Eh? Still, it's worth it. Speak for yourself. I meant I'll get it in the neck now from my dad. So he's supposed to go and pick the new brochures up. I better call him and say he was delayed. Oh, what did you tell me about last night, then? That it was late, so I decided to stay over with a friend. You sure I can't help you out with the cost? It means I'm skimmed for another month, but what's money when you haven't got any? Well, looks like you get enough. That? My dad keeps telling me. It's one of his demos. If anyone ever wants to test drive, I'm a pedestrian again. Sounds as bad as my old fella. The only trouble working for your parents is, I might get a bit more free time. The emphasis is on the way free. Well, slavery comes to mind. Still, beats working for a living. See ya. What time? Oh, yeah. Well, well, look who it is. Cookie Salesman of the Year. You all right, Ben? Funny you should ask, but no, I'm not actually. In fact, why should I be bitter? Look, um, I came to say, well, to see how you are and uh, to say I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry? <laughs> you took your time, didn't you? Well, I wanted to talk to you, you know, and um, see if you could sort of, in some way... You're not going to ask me to forgive you, are you? I can understand if you can't. I'm not forgiving you for anything. I'm going to be suing you. Yeah, well, I can understand that. Stop saying you understand because you don't. I'm a firefighter. And my career's over because these are useless. And that's your fault. Ben. You give Ron Dixon a hose to fit that cooker. You knew when you handed it to him you weren't supposed to do it, didn't you? Didn't you? But I didn't hand it to him. So how did he get it then? I, th I threw it in the bin. What, so that he could fish it out again, like? Well, yeah, but I told him he needed a proper fit. Oh, I'll behave. I know. It was stupid of me. Nice you to admit it was your fault, instead of me lying here constantly blaming myself. Look, Ben. Oh, just get out, will you? You're not interested in me, just in getting me off your conscience. Ben, listen. You've ruined me life enough already. Just don't rub it in, eh? Go on, beat it. Go on, get out! No one does. Because why does I ever let myself get into this position? Stop thinking like that, eh? All I ever wanted to be was my own boss. Get me bored and it was all going well. And then that Callum Finnegan walks in. I must be stupid, you know that. Oh, stop torturing yourself. None of this was your fault. And then Barry Grant, the night in Shan and Arma, steps in to save me. And then robs me bar from underneath my nose. Why don't I just leave it all behind, eh? Take me back on the ball and everything else. I'll just go outside, OK? What did 
Empty, sorry. They think she might lose the baby. Would you get into a coach with a driver who appeared drunk? That's one of the questions next on 4 as the tourist trap takes a cheeky peek at our holiday habits. <laughs>